Welcome back to Boring Build Friday. Today we're working on our 2015 GMC Terrain Denali. Now, you might not remember this one, it's been a while. Link's up there if you need to get cut up. In the first video we took it all apart, in the second video we pulled it basically for no reason, and now we're going to fix it the right way. So in this video I'll show you how to take the rails off of our parts car, take the rails off of this car, and the aprons, the whole assembly, and get ready to put it all back together. Let's get started. So here's the tools we're going to use for this job. We got our propane torch, our hammer, a scraper, a few drill bits, a chisel, a grinder, and then our drill. I use electric drills because I'm here at home and my little air compressor doesn't always keep up if I use air tools. Here's the first bit we're going to use. It's just an eighth inch drill bit. It's double sided. They're pretty cheap. They're pretty much throwaways. I use these to drill pilot holes. Uh, it goes a lot quicker that way. And when you break them or you dull them, you just toss them, move on to the next one. This is our step bit. A lot of times it's called a unibit. As you can see, it just gets bigger as you go further in. This is our flat tip spot weld bit. Instead of having a taper at the end, like most drill bits, it's flat. It'll drill a hole through the panel we're trying to remove, but save the panel that's underneath it. And if we're interested in using that panel underneath or we're not removing it, uh, that's when this one comes into play. As you can see, the regular drill bit has a taper to it. So when you drill out the hole enough to get the outer panel off, you've made an indent kind of in the lower panel. You kind of see the difference there. First thing we need to do is remove the scene sealer. This is where our propane torch comes in. If you can, it's always helpful to heat it up from the back side. It makes it peel off in one big piece pretty easily. So you don't have to use a propane torch. You could use a heat gun if you have some dislike for fire. It just takes a little bit longer. You don't want to get it too hot. Just warm it up a little bit. If you're burning the paint, you're getting it too hot. Now we're going to take our eighth inch bit. We're going to drill out these right here. Because we're not concerned with the pieces underneath, we're going to throw them away. So we can drill a hole all the way through them. And that's what I'm going to do, because it's the quickest way possible. So we'll drill all our pilot holes real quick. Now we're going to switch to our step drill bit and drill these holes a little larger. Drill them to about 5 16ths, 8 millimeter, if you're not using freedom units. So now we're inside. This is where the foot well is. And that's, this is the inside of that panel. Since we don't care about this, we're just gonna grind these off. We're gonna basically grind through the outer piece of metal around the spot weld so that the spot weld will have nothing to hold to it. It'll just fall through. The panel underneath, if we do it right, should have, you know, minimal, if anything, grinding marks. We only wanna go through the outer panel. So I'm gonna take off this little bit of sound deadening material there and grind it out. So we'll just scrape the sound deadening material off. You could heat it up, but it makes kind of a gooey mess. So I didn't always use this method. It took me a while to really try the grinding. But once you get used to it, it works really well, especially on high strength steel. It usually likes the dull drill bits and wear them out. I think we got them all. So now we'll just give it a whack from the other side. See where it started to pull through there. I'll be able to chisel all the metal away from there because it's pretty thin. That way I don't have to worry about grinding into the piece below it. We got our chisel in there, pry it away a little bit, break all those welds loose. These are the three that are on the bottom of the frame rail that we're going to use. So we are concerned with the frame rail itself. We don't want to drill holes all the way through. So now we're going to use our flat drill bit. So now that we have all our spot welds drilled out or ground out, whatever the case may be, uh, we can separate this panel. At least I think I got them all. Sometimes you miss some and you got to go back. So all you want to do is put your chisel between the panels. So we just hammer our scraper in there. If you need some tension, see if you can hit it at a different angle from the other side. So you're not tearing it up too bad. 
sometimes you don't drill the hole perfectly centered. So if we can hit it from the other side, it pulls it out a little easier. I'll just wiggle it and break the rest of them loose. So now we got the rest of it all drilled out or ground out, whatever we needed. So now we're ready to separate our assembly. Wiggle it around a little bit, break the last few remaining welds. And we got one stubborn one. Got it. Now we'll pull our seam sealer off the other side. That's as much as I could get to from the inside. That's why it came off nice and easy. This will be a little harder. When you heat it up on top, it doesn't quite work as well. This stuff was kind of brittle. When you heat it up, it was a little bit softer. So now we'll drill our pilot holes. Now we'll drill the larger holes. Now we'll grind off the inside, like we did on the other side. Give it a couple hits. Hit a little hard there. Put a hole right through it. Now we use the chisel to separate the panel like we did on the other side. Do the easier spots first. Sometimes when you get them off, you can pry on it a little bit, break the rest loose. Success. We took that piece off primarily so we get to the welds on the rail inside. We didn't actually need that piece. It was just in our way. So we have all of our, all of our welds drilled out. All the way around. I cut the inside of the cowl out here. Just to make it easier to get in there and work on stuff. I also cut that part of the tower. Just to make it easier to pry the pieces off. Now we'll knock some of our welds loose. There must be a faster way. Sometimes it helps to loosen them up a little bit. So we're going to take an air chisel. We're just going to hit this. Not the part we're using. I'm not trying to cut through it. I'm just trying to shake it. As you can see, just the vibration from the air chisel is enough to pop most of those welds up. So now we'll lean on it a little bit. Wiggle and pull. Works for trim panels and frame rails. So there's to it. So there's the two pieces we removed. They're not ready to go in yet. We're gonna clean up all the welds and add our weld through primer. We'll prep all that in a minute, as soon as we get our rails off our other truck. Okay, so now that we've gotten everything pulled somewhat to where it belongs, we're gonna start drilling our parts out. But before we just start drilling, we need to think about what we're saving and what we're throwing away. So here's our frame rail. And as you can see, I did drill these out. And I didn't drill these out. I drilled these all the way through. And I did not drill those all the way through. So now on the same ones over here, because we drilled our other side all the way through on here, we're gonna have to grind this off 
from underneath so that this will be a backing. It will be a solid piece with no holes in it. Then the holes will be on the other side. We'll weld it up from the back side. These across the bottom here that I did not drill all the way through, I can drill all the way through on here. I'll be able to weld from the other side to this new panel when we replace it. I have to take this bracket off, but once it's off, I'll be able to drill the holes out of the other one and not through the panel that's underneath because that panel will go, there's another panel underneath it, so I'll have a backing so I can drill those, but I can't go all the way through. This is the panel we took off before. I'm gonna save that panel, so pretty much I'm gonna drill all those holes without going through the panel that's underneath. I'm just taking this off so that I can access the rail underneath it. Um, and that's the only reason, not because we're replacing it, we're just getting it out of our way so we can work on the stuff underneath. Over here, I can drill these all the way through because I'm going to throw away the panel that's underneath. And I did not drill them all the way through on my used panel. So I'll be a, those will be a backing. So I'll have holes up right here, here, and here that I can weld up. So now I'll drill our pilot holes. For our regular holes. Now we can use our chisel to knock it apart. There's some bonding agent in here, or glue. You can heat it up or just chisel it out. Not on the inside of the apron where we don't want to drill through. We're just going to grind it off. Now instead of using the chisel to knock this apart, what I'm going to do is go on the back side and just give it a good hit and see how many of those I can just break loose. All of them. But rather than wasting our time and trying to knock each one loose, just hit it from the back side. We don't care about this panel, so it saves a lot of time. One thing that I do want to note is I do a lot of plug welds. The reason I do that is when you're using used parts, it's the easiest and most common way. I actually could use a squeeze type resistant spot welder, which is exactly what the factory does. It pinches it together, runs current through it, and fuses everything together. In order to do that, I would have to save both panels. So if I were to grind this side off of this one on the parts one, and vice versa here, I would have no holes, I'd have complete panels, and I could actually use that uh, squeeze type resistance spot welder. But this will work just fine, so that's why we want to make sure we only have holes in one panel. But for this project, I actually could have done it using the factory spot welder. Just a side note. Now here's where it can get a little confusing. And if you're anything like me, you just get all excited to start drilling and you don't want to drill the wrong ones. For example, these, I cannot, I have to grind these out because I don't want to make holes all the way through. In order to keep myself from going crazy and drilling holes where they're not supposed to be, I just mark the ones that I can't drill all the way through. Now this one I can't grind, even though I can't go all the way through, I can't grind it off because I'm saving this piece. There's actually three pieces here. So I want to go through the first two layers, but not the third. So we're going to have to use our flat drill bit for that one. So now we got everything drilled out or ground out. It's not going to part. Sometimes doing a little bit extra work ends up saving you a lot of time in the long run and making the whole job a little bit easier. So we've gotten all of our pieces off here, but it's still part of the frame wrap. Now there's no need to drill all these out because we're throwing both of these pieces away. But it would be nice to have this out of the way so we can work around it and we can get to our other welds. So for that, we use an air chisel with just a flat bit. And all you do is put it in there and chisel out the welds. Sometimes they'll pop out nice, sometimes they won't. But honestly, we don't care. If nothing else, it's just a really good excuse to use our favorite tool. 
Don't forget, always wear hearing protection and eye protection when chiseling. Do as I say, not as I do. Safety experts took a huge loss today. Before I remove these parts here, I scribe a line. This part is staying. This is the piece we're replacing, so it goes on top. So I scribe a line on here, and then when I put the new panel in, I'll know about where it goes. Now every car is different, and I don't mean a terrain is different from an enclave. I mean every terrain is different. They may be off a millimeter or two in either direction. Uh, the one next one off the assembly line might not be in the same place. But when I put this in, it will get me close. And then all I gotta do is measure my point underhood measurements and I'll know where it belongs. But if I line that up, sometimes it's exact, uh, but it gets me an idea where I need to be. It saves me a little time. On my used parts, I scribed around these because this is my used part and it goes underneath. So it has lines that will match the ones that are up here. So I get to line up everything. And like I said, they don't know, they're not always perfect, but it's a real quick guide to get you where you need to be. Now we're gonna cut our other apron and frame rail, get it out of the way. Just a different method to do the same thing. Instead of taking out the piece in one big piece, we'll cut out this chunk, and then we'll work with little pieces. In the pile. Now we just got our little pieces in there. And knock them out. In the pile. Now we'll drill the rest of our frame rail out. You've seen it all before. All right, now that we got all of our parts off, it's time to put the new pieces on, but before we do anything, we need to prep our welds. So what we're gonna do is clean all the paint off around the holes that we're gonna weld. You can see I've already done these. Clean off both sides. You wanna get any contaminants out of there? Any paint that's in there is going to get into your weld and compromise the weld. So you want to get it as clean as possible. Uh, if, you, if any of these edges are bent from when you were trying to pop the piece apart with the chisel, just hammer and dolly them straight. These where I ground the pieces off, I'll have to smooth those out. So we're just going to grind off whatever was left on there after we knocked our welds loose. First with the die grinding disc, and then we'll hit it with a grinding disc, usually 36 grit. This little tab was bent, so we're gonna hammer it back into place. Now we're gonna put our weld through primer on. And the weld through primer goes on all the bare metal mating surfaces. You basically only need it where you're sandwiching two panels together. So now that everything's prepped, uh, I went ahead and set up the gauges. This is going to tell me where the parts that I'm putting on belong. They're set for length and width right now. I didn't set the height because I'm going to have to take those little pointers out of there to get the pieces in. Once the pieces are in there, I can put those back in, adjust them to the right height, and it'll put me exactly where I need to be. So now it's time to put our puzzle pieces in our puzzle. Gotta slide the rail in. It's got to go underneath the apron, and then the rails, the upper rails have to go inside each other. So you use a scraper to line the panels up. Now we're going to hammer it up into place. Do the same thing on the passenger side. So now our frame rails are all lined up according to the frame rack. Now we're going to check our underhood measurements. I do check these measurements while I'm welding just to make sure nothing's changed. Generally it stays in the same place when you clamp it all up real good and start welding it. Okay, everything's square. Our cross measurements, side to side, front to back. We're ready to weld it all up. So now it's all welded up. We're going to finish our welds off. We'll grind them down a little bit, not all the way, leave a little bit, 
And then after they're pretty smooth, we'll run over them with the 36 and flatten them out so you can't see them at all. Now we'll clean it up with the plastic wheel. This gets all the paint off that was flaking off from the heat of the welder. Sometimes just sanding it or scuffing it won't take that off. So this kind of takes it all off real easy. And then you just scuff it. Now that we've ground down all of our welds and cleaned them all up, got all the loose paint off with the black plastic wheel, uh, we scuffed all this. Now we're going to put some etching primer on there. Uh, we're going to kind of put it on a little heavy, let it flow into the cracks here. Um, extra corrosion protection. Uh, fills it in and coats everything real good. Uh, and then we're going to come back and we're going to caulk uh, the parts that need to be caulked. And then we'll paint it. Okay, comment on all my runs. Yeah, I don't care. I need it to run down to that seam, and it doesn't matter. It'll get sanded and painted anyway. So now we're going to put our seam sealer on there. We're trying to make it look original, but not too close. We don't care. It's got a rebuilt title. It's not like I'm hiding anything. If it was a clear title and I wanted to send it to the auction, I'd make it look like the original. But I generally don't do that. So now I hand it off to the painter, he painted it all up, now it's time to put the dash back in. It must be afternoon, because the afternoon crew is here. This is probably the worst part of the entire job. The dash is heavy, it's awkward, and it's fragile. If you pretty much set it down on any part of it, it will break. So you got to keep it upright until it gets in the position it belongs in. Now it's got to tilt like this. So like the front, no other way. Yeah, right there. All right, hold on. So we got it in there, put a couple bolts in, and we're home free. And send the afternoon crew back to CrossFit. So like the video if you found it interesting. Share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see the rest of this build. I promise it won't take me as long to finish it. Actually, spoiler alert, it's already done. But I'll get the videos out a little quicker. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.